From fabulous Los Angeles, California, Hollywood, home of the stars, the magic factory where dreams come true, culture capital of the world, jewel of the Pacific, it's the Adam Carolla Show. Yeah, get it on, got to get it on, no choice but to get it on. Mandate, get it on. Where'd our little afros go that were on our microphones? Where'd my beard go? They're oh, my God. Yeah. I didn't even notice. They're not I called know. afros. They're called naturals. Ah, sorry, naturals. You match the microphones. A <sighs> couple things. Um, I guess we got rid of these because uh, they take up a little too much room. Uh, tonight's, by the way, show uh, live on YouTube.com slash VPN. And uh, if you're watching live and you have a question, you can tweet us at Adam Carolla Show and uh, hashtag ACS on VPN, and then we'll answer it or something. Allison, am I missing something? I believe that's how it's going to work. Good. Get it on. Got to get it on. No choice but to get it on. Mandate. Get it on, baby. Excited because uh, Dana Gould is coming in here and uh, Greg Fitzsimmons is coming in here, and those guys rarely miss. That is... Uh, on on base average in terms of that's the heart of your lineup. We're talking an OPS over 1,000. That's right. On base percentage. I know. Or <laughs> on base something. So I'll why did you shave, yeah. Adam? Um, honestly, my fucking beard is brutal. Like <laughs> everything that comes out of me is a pube. <laughs> I don't have hair and pubic hair. Yeah. I just have pube. A pube on my head, mm -hmm. pube on my crotch. I, my ass hair is softer than my chin hair. Like, it hurts me. It's, it, you know, my, I was thinking about it. And I was thinking, like, what, what does it feel like? Like, what's its texture? What's the nature of it? Like, how coarse is it? And then I realized, you ever see, if you ever go to a country club and it's a, a like a golf country club mm -hmm. and you're going into the restaurant and they have that thing shaped like a porcupine, it's real cute, that has the, Prickles sticking out of it to clean your golf shoes off oh, before yeah. before yes. you head into the restaurant. That's what my fucking beard feels like. Like, it hurts my hand. Kind I of like you had beard burn as if you'd been making out with a lumberjack, but yeah. it was just you were walking around. No, it, not even like that. <laughs> just that. And oh, like in the back of a pitcher's mound when the pitcher kicks it to get the dirt yes, off his cleats. that thing. That's what it feels like. Like when you go to the Sky Catalog or the Sky Mall and you look for that weird thing to get clean your boots off right. that you put in your mud porch. That's what my beard feels like. And I can't even stroke it and think because it hurts my hand. <laughs> so I've done almost no thinking. Your thumb and forefinger are all red. Oh, doing a lot of thinking, huh, Adam? Well, there's two ways. When you go to the f head for thinking, there's the I'm stroking my beard, which is I'm coming up with a great thought. Mm -hmm. And since that's now eliminated, I have to do the scratch the back of the head, which means I'm confused and yeah. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, that doesn't make you look like you're deep in Hand thought. Hand on the beard means you're composing something that's going to be fantastic. Back of the head is, uh, what is that? And I'm confused. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's my next move? Also, fleas. Right. Or pubic crabs that have lost their way. <laughs> Pube crabs without their Garmin. So um, it was brutal, but I shaved. Uh, now I'm back to not being hip in Hollywood anymore. But let me say this. Um, I got insanely outraged today because people tweet me things. And they, they tweet me things to just to piss me off. But I, I think they do it so I'll come on this program and, and go insane. And... Um, they hit the nail on the head this time. Yeah. Uh, somebody tweeted me this thing from uh, The Hill, some online something, political something, something. Senator Barbara Boxer says uh, Villaraigosa, our mayor, the mayor of Los Angeles, would be a terrific transportation secretary. Ugh. She used the word terrific. Terrific is the word she used because I guess Obama needs to get a new Ooh. transportation secretary, and this guy would be terrific. You know how in the song, the the, the Christmas song, the traffic is terrific. terrific. Sometimes terrific means horrible, like terrifying. Mm. He could be a terrifying transportation because the tra oh the traffic will be terrific. There you go. Mm. I feel like that's not how she meant it. It's usually more cataclysmic is how she, is the word she should have used. I, because uh, now it's clear that obviously Villaraigosa's real name is Tony Villar, an egomaniacal dwarf with a personality disorder. But now it's clear that Barbara, Barbara Boxer's fucking off a rocker because this is insane. Says, I have the list. By the way, this is like announcing that Chris Christie would be great for the Presidential's Council on Physical Fitness. Like, that's <laughs> how fucking insane yeah. this is. You want to know why? Because I have a piece of paper that has the worst traffic cities, not in the United States or California, in North America. 
North America. This is all North America. It starts off, Chicago's number 10. They go to Montreal. Well, there's a few. We got Toronto, Honolulu. I mean, we're covering some ground here. Number one, the worst traffic city in North America. Number one is the one Barbara Boxer thinks the mayor of should be, ru- should be running transportation for the, for the country. Mm-hmm. Number one. So it's Los Angeles. Yes. Los Angeles is number one. And look. Liz, listen to me. Obviously, Barbara Boxer, either, again, um, stupid or liar. What is it? What is it, bitch? Are you insanely dumb that you're taking the mayor of the worst Mm -hmm. traffic city in North America and declaring that he would be a fine, no, a terrific choice for transportation secretary? Or are you just a bullshit liar? Just, you know, he's a Democrat. He's Hispanic. I want some kudos with the Hispanic community. Like, I don't know what you're doing, but stupid or liar, Barbara Boxer. It's one or the other. There's no in between. I kind of no. want to go liar because I, terrific, I'd like to go liar terrific too. is kind of an inauthentic thing to say about something. Like, if you feel like someone's really good, would ter- like, when's the last time you said terrific no, and meant that's it? That's a, Maybe never. when you have your adult special needs child who tied his first bow. Terrific. That's terrific. Terrific, Eugene. That is terrific. <laughs> um, oh, baby, you're, you're drooling on your shoe now. Yeah. yeah, we'll put some saran wrap over that. But anyway, terrific. Terrific. Oh, you made a poo-poo in the yeah, toilet. Yeah, terrific. terrific. It's, 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 the, it's a close cousin to good for you. <laughs> good yes. for you. Terrific. Terrific news. Good for you. So obviously he wouldn't be – obviously he's not terrific at anything because you see Los Angeles. But traffic. Especially, yes. And it's not just the traffic. We have a public transportation system here that no one uses. When's the last time any of us took, like, the major transportation? I Here's my argument that I would make if Never. I was Barbara Boxer. Maybe maybe you've tapped, on, tapped into something here, Brian. He's not worn himself out <laughs> working on transportation <laughs> issues. He's fresh. He's due. He's due. He's green. He's uh, not green. He's due. You know okay. what I mean? He's due. Oh, yeah. to, like, like, you know, when you're playing a slot machine up. for a while yeah. and it's just not hitting, mm-hmm. it's w- overdue. It's warmed up. It's ready for a payout. And I would say, like a guy, you know, there's guys who play in the NFL for 16, 17 years. They have cartilage damage. You know, you know what I mean? They're, they, they've lost a step. They've yeah, been beaten up. The Too many concussions. He's brand new when it comes to this topic of transportation. Mm-hmm. So maybe... Maybe he's raring to go like, like a young rookie. I love your slot machine analogy because essentially we've been putting quarters into the mayoral race for right. <laughs> 10 years. And we have nothing he's due. To show from it. He's due. All right. So Los Angeles not only has the worst fucking traffic problem in the world, not only does it have chicken shit, shit cops writing chicken shit tickets to everybody, slowing traffic down because everyone rubbernecks when these guys are pulled off on the side of the fucking freeway getting their illegal tint or their no front license plate chicken shit tickets. But also, we are easily the dumbest city in the country, and I've said it many times. It's nothing but click it or ticket, which no shit. Everyone knows. Everyone's aware of that. It's built into every car since 1976. Nobody knows it's legal to turn on a right. This is a very simple thing. There could be a campaign, an awareness campaign, to let people know it's legal to turn on a right. They don't know that. Intersections are clogged up because people will not turn on a right. The person behind them doesn't know it because they don't honk at the person to turn on a right. So instead of all the 55 saves lives, drunk driving, it's buzz driving, it's drunk driving, report drunk driving, uh, click it or tick it, instead of all the slow down shit, we could have a little campaign about Move along now. Get along now. Doesn't exist. Yes. Apropos to everyone tweeting you things, the thing that opened my eyes the most was when everyone tweeted us after we were like, oh, other cities have the thing where if you get an offender bender, pull over. And it's like, oh, yeah, our city has that. I got dozens of tweets. and It was, it was mind-blowing that we're so, so late to this Do- party. Dozens of tweets of many other highways across this land of ours, not, not in Los Angeles, of course, but net many other ones that have signs by the side of the road, side of the freeway that says if you get into a fender bender, not if you roll your car six <laughs> times and it bursts into flames, but if you get into a fender bender, pull mm-hmm. off the freeway so you do not clog things. Los Angeles with our mayor, no. He doesn't do shit. Why? There's no fucking money in it for him. He doesn't get paid for us being inconvenienced. Or not inconvenience. He's too busy being a fucking terrific. So listen, Barbara Boxer, stupid or liar, Vera Grossa, it's the worst city in North America for traffic. That's all That's all you need to know. If, you, if people who are listening and watching don't understand how bad the traffic is, let's just explain it. It can take 
what, like two hours to get from somewhere sort of, well. Let, let's let's put it this way. A ridiculous amount to get from the west to east side or vice versa. When, when we go, when we play the Irvine Improv, which we will be playing on a Thursday with Gilbert Godfrey, it will take close to two hours to get there. Now, if it was not during a traffic time, it would take about 45, 50 minutes yeah. to get there. And as soon as you get out of Los Angeles proper and you get into Orange County, the seas part, the heavens open, and it's smooth sailing all the way after that because they somehow know how to run a fucking city. You know the uh, USA Today infographics you love so much? Mm -hmm. I once saw one that was actual information. It was uh, of, the, of the top 20 most congested uh, like freeway intersections. Mm -hmm. Eight were in Los Angeles, Southern California. Yes. Uh, again, Eight of 20 look, in th the country. The point is this. It's a massive problem. It's faced Los Angeles for 40 years. It can be addressed. It cannot be alleviated. It, it's like any other problem. You're not going to get rid of breast cancer. You're going to bring awareness to it, and you're going to get early detection. You're going to cut into it. And last year, instead of 50,000 women dying, this year it'll be 32,000, and eventually it'll be 2,000, and that'll be, it'll never go away. But you can work on it. You can work on traffic. You can tow cars off to the side. You can turn right on a raid. You cannot hand out chicken shit tickets during rush hours. There's a million things you could do. Awareness campaigns that don't cost a fucking penny and we don't do shit. So, are we interested in alleviating traffic? Answer, no. Why? It does not generate money for the coffers of the corrupt city. They are interested in handing out chicken shit tickets. That does generate money, although ironically slows traffic down when you pull people off the side of the freeway. And then there's this new super depressing one. Not only that, via retardo, but I'm, your new construction, <laughs> you have barbed wire around all the freeway signs, and the freeway construction that's being done on the new on-ramps gets graffitied every, every, every day they add six feet on to the, the overpass, and then that night they come in and tag it. Jesus fucking Christ. They could the be, same people. <laughs> couldn't that be a worse city and a worse mayor to use as an example um there's this new weird depressing sign i'm now passing to and the whole thing la just does a lot of signs that are sort of uh you're on your own like <laughs> yeah. you take care of your own shit oh uh, and by the way help police police it police it for us oh, yeah. which is like hey if you see a drunk driver go ahead and uh, you know cut him off yeah and then get him in a headlock and drag him <laughs> down to the precinct and if you could fingerprint him that would be awesome <laughs> right uh, this is called Hide It, Lock It, Keep It. I saw this. But it looks it's like Hide It, Fuck It, Keep It. I, I don't know what this is. I think it's my camera. I, I okay. turn, and maybe there's a better picture, but the point is this. It's I all keep digital signs passing the these mobile digital signs. We have digital signs all over the fucking Southland, and it's either click it or ticket, which means nothing to a human being that you've ever met. Is, is that, uh, it, what, what's more important, that campaign or secondhand smoke? Like, who do you know? Who do you know that's that falls under the category of I do not wear my seatbelt. I have a placard that lights up in my car and I have a gong that goes off in my car, <laughs> but I ignore that yeah. and I will not put my seatbelt on, but I am positively affected by this freeway sign. Yeah, zero it's point zero, zero percent. Right. But the thing that always gets me is that it would be so much more effective for the drunk driving or seatbelts or anything if they were to point out what's actually at risk. And it's yes. more than just a ticket. Yes. It's if they were to point out that if you're texting while driving, you're going to run into someone or whatever. Sure. Which other, you know, we've seen ads in other countries, they do that. Oh, by the way, our mayor of Los Angeles, 50% hit, hit and run. 50% hit and run in Los Angeles. 50% of the accidents are hit and run. And Barbara Boxer thinks he would be a terrific choice for transportation secretary. 50%. The rest of the nation, 10%. Los Angeles, 50% hit and run. It's a huge scourge. People are dying every day with this hit and run business. But uh, the mayor, Villaraigosa, fantastic choice for transportation secretary. So Wouldn't you agree, Dana Gould? Tony Villar? Yes, Tony Villar. <laughs> Find me that, uh, by the way, show me that fucking ticket, lock it, put it in your pocket uh, bullshit what does again. What mean? Hide it, lock it, keep it. I think they're saying hide your drugs under your seat, then lock yeah. your car, and then you can keep them. I don't know what hide it means. I, what? I understand the lock it. I your think valuables? I, here's what I think Are they saying. talking about your phone? No, I hide it, lock <laughs> it, keep <laughs> it. No, here's what they're saying. Campaign. Here's what they're saying. First off, you have 
four intelligent people here who cannot figure out what the fuck this campaign is about. So, by the way, the illegal speeding past on the donkey, half drunk, <laughs> good luck making heads or tails of this bullshit. Hide it, lock it, keep it. All right, here's what it is. Hide it is don't leave your purse on the passenger seat. Yes, I'm talking to you, Dana Gould. My man purse. I just called a purse. <laughs> don't leave it mm-hmm. on. Well, do you call your purse a woman purse? No. Thank you. All I right. I just caught my vagina. Hi- hide it. <laughs> Change oh, purse. purse. Hide it. Keys and chapstick. Hide it is take your laptop and slide it under uh. your seat or put your jacket over it or something like that. Lock it is then lock your car. And then the good news is you get to keep your laptop. Oh, I We're see. We're living in a utopia. So uh, what? Dana Gould. More depressing. Barbed wire around the freeway signs. Mm-hmm. These kind of signs. Right. The bumper stickers that say stop senior abuse or no human trafficking or the placards outside of the firehouses that say drop your kid off here. Don't d- throw, don't throw them in a the dumpster or put an M80 up their ass or put them into a wood chipper. The, the bumper stickers, I, I'm not depressed about at all because I know they do a lot of good work. I know that human trafficking has gone down since the well, bumper stickers. I, I'm not proud to say, but I do know some human traffickers. Yeah. And a lot of them said that since they started looking at that swatch of vinyl, they've really given it right. a second thought. To that end, soul searching. they should have specified that Take Back the Night was not directed at the rapists. Oh, it right. It was at everybody else we to take were it back from take back the rapist. Because right. if a rapist is in the car, invisible right. ink and he rapist. just sees that bumper sticker, you know, I think I'm going to take back the night. That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. The barbed wire signs around the freeways, I think, are hilarious. That It's literally protecting nothing. Right. <laughs> People are going to risk their lives. But, that but always kills me. We've devolved to the point where, the, in yeah. our city, where yeah. that is necessary. Well, it's we're very close to throwing poop, which is right. Which is the that's right. That's the leap. That will that be take. the next bumper. That's sticker. the leap back. Yes. Yeah. A day it's of- the reverse of two thousand one, where the <laughs> where the stick that was the first weapon became the nuclear satellite. Right. We're going back to the stick. Uh, Dana Gould is in the uh, studio. Dana can be found, by the way, doing live shows January twenty fifth and twenty sixth. Up Comedy Club in Chicago and the podcast, The Dana Gould Hour. You can get it on iTunes. DanaGould.com is where you go. And tweet him at Dana J. Gould. What's going on? How are the kids doing, Dana? Everybody's great. I love I'm that. so happy to be out of the house. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Uh, especially with my three year old because apparently it's Shark Week. So oh, I'm yeah. glad to be away. Yeah. Shark Week is. Uh, no, Shark. Oh, week. Shark Week. Oh, it's sorry. Sh- it's Shark know- Week. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know it was Shark Week. Yeah, oh. with the with the with the three year old. Yeah, bad times. Something's going on. Yeah, I yeah. gotta go. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, at a certain point, I just want to dip them. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I want In a what? barrel, um, hydrochloric acid or something. You yeah. know, obviously it's been cut with saline solution. A lot I mean, of I, young, lot of young kids, lot of dogs, and I'm just responsible for too much poop. Yeah, there's a, a lot of poo. Basis. I need to. Yeah. I need to ask something about this shark thing. Mm-hmm. Now, is she just going poop in her pants accidentally, or is it a true shark? No, which it's is just where you constant fart and sharding. Then, it's just okay. constant sharding. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I don't. I don't like that. And I. It's the one. It's the one thing I just couldn't fucking hang with. Like as a dad, I, I'm sure there'll be other things like eye contact and things <laughs> where I draw yeah. a line. But at some point, but. At that, at the early stages, the shit diaper just could not, or my, as we call it, pulling a roker. Yes, <laughs> my daughter is so fucking diabolical that even at the age, uh, you know, she does the. I mean, she's just a little ball buster. She's insane, mm-hmm. right? My son's a little sweetie. He kisses you, you know, on the lips. Calls you father. Hugs you. She gives you the lips and then gives you the forehead, like at the last second, that kind of thing. She, God, hand to God. Two years of age, I'd go, I'd come home off the road, I'd come pick him up and hug him and squeeze him. She started to learn that if she'd shit herself, I wouldn't pick her up and squeeze her like I would normally Mm -hmm. do. And then at a certain point, started lying and saying that she shit herself because she didn't 
Right. L- like, basically, you sh- you're going out on a first date and talking about your period the whole time. Right. Which I know well, you'll do. I've actually had women yeah. shit themselves on a date just to, just to get out sure of that, yeah, contact, to get out of it, yeah. being intimate with you. Yeah. Look, I, you're a really nice guy, but I just I just had a full load. Little did they know Gould was into that. <laughs> yeah. like, all Good of a sudden, news. you got more. <laughs> Baby, you just worked your way from a six and a half to a nine <laughs> on the Gouldo meter. And then I like, pull up my shirt and have an I Heart Snack Packs tattoo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pudding time. Pudding so did time. so did you guys change the poopy diapers? I did a little of it, but I realize that there are certain things. I it's it's an interesting interesting thing. We are wired. Men and women are wired, you know, differently. Mm. Like there's certain things. Not true. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> certain things that we can't see or ha- you know, look, we can watch the UFC. Get the guy guys can get the shit kicked out of. Gashes open, blood everywhere, compound fractures. Guys will watch it over and over again with their replay on their TiVo. Women, it's like, no, 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 no. no. Right, right. right. Finger trellis. But the shitty diaper is like one of those things where mom snaps into mom action and dad snaps into I'm going to heave action. Like all of a sudden, that's not my kid. You're cleaning up the shit of your kid. We're cleaning up the shit of a kid, and we ain't into it. I've done a lot of it, mm-hmm. and what the problem is with girls, there are times when it just oh, goes everywhere, yeah, yeah. and yes. it really causes you to reevaluate. Growing up, mm. because of uh, uh, waffles, yeah, you yeah. have a, you have an, a natural yeah. instinct to salivate when you hear the phrase "nooks and crannies." <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Not anymore. No. 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 It, it no. Just reverses it's, itself. There is sounds delicious to me. There is <laughs> there is yeah. stepping and shit in a flip flop, and right. then there is stepping and shit in a hiking boot. Right. And one takes a lot longer to clean. Right. Guys have a flip flop downstairs. Right. Women have a boot. Right. I'm going to use English muffins now as toilet paper. Yes, that's right. <laughs> the nooks and the crannies. Yeah, and also there's, there's a thing where you're cleaning, and then the wife is yelling, "You're going the wrong direction." Like I don't know if it's. Clockwise, yeah, yeah, counterclockwise. Front, <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's front to back. Front to back. Face to snatch toward Mecca. Exactly. And I always have the feeling of like, she's going to have a flash memory yes. when she's 30 of uh-huh. the top of my head down right. there. It's right. not what you think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know this looks bad. Right. Yeah. It, it's, 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 and it's a good thing. I mean, I think it's a good thing. That you don't want to change a diaper? Well, what I mean is, it's, it's, it's the same thing I say with the, you know, who's going to take the cub scout troop up to the top of mount pinos for the three-day weekend which yes. is if you know if somebody said uh you know my three-year-old uh, shit up her vagine and you went i'll get that yeah uh, yeah that's not who you want you want the no. guy going i don't feel comfortable i don't right. really I, this is not my that's the same and i've always said dana that like whenever they do that thing where they go who's taking the nine-year-olds camping and one guy's hand goes <laughs> flying up steve you're out you're out yeah the guy i want is a guy who's fucking kicking and screaming and going you know my team's in the playoffs right. they're playing can't sunday i can't fucking do it well that's what i've always said about obgyns do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life <laughs> <laughs> all right dana gould in studio i think uh by the way we're going to be at uh amalfi on la brea that is tonight if you're uh not watching us live ben schwartz is going to be out there and a uh, free glass of Mangria. You got to get there early, and uh, that probably means before six, because it only holds seventy people, and the whole place was packed last time. But it was fun. I saw Mike August actually turn a person away. What? Not one person. And then met them in the parking lot. That's right. Got six dollars so from yeah, them. Pass it on, <laughs> and I can get you upstairs. I've literally. I'll let you watch it from underneath the stage. I have literally seen Mike August sell bottles of Mangria from an alley. <laughs> behind the theater I was playing. Like, like people coming in going, can we buy a bottle? Uh, we can't. Just, like, hang out. Like, you got, you have 20. He could easily be stabbed. It'd be worth the $20 <laughs> for the bottle of Mangria that he sells them in the alley. $12 worth of stitches, that's $8 worth of profit. That's right. <laughs> got to look at it that way. Plus, the stitches are probably a write-off. Yeah. Fitz Dog is here. Greg Fitzsimmons as well. I owe him a uh, debt of gratitude over some very nice things uh, he said about me on Jay Moore's podcast. I'll tell you what we'll do. Uh, I'm going to be in Detroit at the uh, Royal Oak Theater, by the way, this uh, Friday. That's about sold out, so you should jump on that if you're gonna and then like I said Irvine Improv this Thursday Gilbert Godfrey 
He is funny and nuts. Just what you're looking for in a situation like that. All right. Uh, Dana Gould is here. Fitz Dog's coming in. We'll do some news. Have sure. some fun. Do that right after this. Greg Fitzsimmons here. Good to see you, Fitz Dog. Ace Man. Happy New Year. Dana Gould as well. Um, That's my nickname. Dana Gould. <laughs> <laughs> flows well Must he was going to go into the play, nba play but some uh, yeah definitely played some high school ball with that name um <laughs> fitz dog thank you so much for all the kind words uh on a jay morse podcast oh I, uh, yeah I heard we did that. i thought that was very lovely i thought it was, I was uh, supremely flattered by well, by all the nice things you what said d- about what did he me. say the short version well that he's a douche and a backstabbing prick <laughs> no we did a uh, we did a tribute kind of a rant uh, contest. We said in, in honor of Adam, who's the best at taking any topic and having an opinion on it, uh, we gave each other topics and tried to do it and realized how fucking hard it actually is. And I was supremely flattered because I'm a big fan of uh, both you. And well, thank and you. Uh, you guys do a great podcast. And uh, I mean, there's a handful. I mean, think as comedians, whether you say it out loud or you just sort of think it to yourself or you mainly say it to your wife. They're the ones that are funny, and then the ones that are eh, kind of yeah. lucky to be here. And it's not all about who's selling out theaters and who's doing three nights at Noodles uh, outside of Denver. It's more about who you know as somebody who's been around for 20 years in this business, who actually has the goods and who doesn't. I think, I think magicians are that way, too. Yeah. Like, if you talk to a magician— and you go, uh, Copperfield, is he, you'll get the, oh, no, he's really a very good technical, like, you'll get yeah, the yeah, whatever. Yeah. And comedians are sort of that way. Like, well, we know the real ones. Well, I think magicians, there's probably, like, a terminology, like, uh, no, he's an illusionist. He's, right. And with comedians, it's like, no, he's a comic. Right. This guy's a comedian. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And anyway, I was, uh, I'm fans of both you. Bigger fans now, of course. Or a wi- I guess the opposite of an illusionist would be, no, he's a wizard. <laughs> he's a yeah. true wizard. Do you think there's Actually. someone who's, like, a real magician's magician? Jesus Christ. Yep, <laughs> Jesus Christ. But yeah. uh, sadly, that was it. He was just an incredibly good table magician. <laughs> it, it, he couldn't follow up the uh, yeah. I think that was a, water I thing. think that was a Nick Cage movie from about six years ago. <laughs> where he actually, but it's an interesting story. Like, if you actually possessed magic, you could let the world know, but somebody would kill you. Yes. Like, some... Buddy from some s- nutty religious cult would kill you at some point, right? Yeah. Although I don't know, you'd probably be hard to kill if you actually could shoot fire from your cock, or you know, I don't know what your magical you know, skills I, are, but I'm just saying. Off the I top once of my head. thought I was shooting fire from my cock, <laughs> right? But Freshman year in college, yeah, shot a penicillin. Wouldn't right it? Away. Wouldn't it be better to play it a little closer to your paisley magician's vest mm-hmm. if you, in fact? could do magic i mean you you did possess these warlockian skills instead you just go to vegas and freak everyone out right, right. with real magic whatever right. happened to doug henning mm. remember him yes. he's illusionist he was the <laughs> brian so boitano of, uh, on the back yeah. of his head magic. he was incredibly he was he was more 70s oh my god than england dan and john ford coley more he like was, elvis used <gasps> to tell yeah. him take it easy on the jumpsuit yeah like, he's a little much 70s like there's nothing wrong with, with a jumpsuit but you are fuck you've jumped the, the rainbow, shark, with, shark with his jumpsuit nipple to nipple rainbow yeah, yeah. and elephant bell bottoms <laughs> look at him <laughs> Well, there was there was only two guys that pulled off the jumpsuit, and it was Elvis and Evil Knievel. I know, I know, and and it, like I would argue, Pete Townsend is a possible. I thing. I, I would argue that. that too. I would like to to get Doug Henning and and Elvis together and just have them have a. <laughs> I have a jumpsuit too. Uh, hey man. I also have a jumpsuit. If you're done with them potatoes, I'll just take them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's really there's no there's no middle ground on jumpsuits. You're either working the highway, right, an or, inmate, yeah. or you're yeah. the highest paid That's music right. icon of all or time. Or you're a or you're one of the pips. <laughs> yeah, no, it is a rich man, poor man, the jumpsuit. Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> That's you're either fucking super rich or super yeah. poor. You're by side of the freeway, pissing in a porta potty on yeah. wheels. By the way, you want to talk about upping the loser ante when the porta potty <laughs> is on a trailer. <laughs> Pissing and shitting in a porta potty is a, a sign you have not arrived. Yeah. And if it's where you go, like your roofer and that's on the job site, not a good sign. When it is on a trailer, yeah. that's super bad yeah. news. Yeah. And and it's super bad news, too, if you're doing the job with the guys from uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, 
uh, Johnny Jackass Knoxville, mm-hmm. but the Jackass yeah. guys. The porta that- actually, in a weird way, the porta potty is its own rich man, poor man. The shitting into a, a thing that is, does not have plumbing to it because it is the side of the freeway. Um, I have 300 hours of community service picking up shit on the side of right. the 405. Or if you ever go to like the Grammys or the Emmys or the Oscars, they will have the luxury like porta potties set up in there because they yeah. can't accommodate a I thousand have a story asses. About- I and then there's the tour bus, oh, porta yes. potty, and then if you think about it, there's the Lear Jet. Basically, that's not hooked up to any plumbing. Wait, do they become luxurious at some point? I'm saying you have the high. If you're shitting right, into a but thing I'm without the experience yeah. of shitting into a Grammy's toilet, is it delightful? No, but you're a star. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's rich man, poor man. I'm not. You saying. can also yeah. shit into a Grammy. They do have. Oh, yeah. They have special yeah. commemorative. You can't shit into a Cable Ace Award. Yes. Well, um, I more tried. You know. Yeah. But here's I a great <laughs> porta potty story of a <laughs> high end porta potty. Mm. Uh, when Reagan recovered from being uh, shot, mm-hmm. one of the things that he never fully recovered. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that he, this is not a joke, this is true. Uh, one of the things that he suffered from for the rest of his life was he had terrible IBS because mm-hmm. they had to reroute his intestines. Irritable bowel um, syndrome. Yeah, he had terrible uh, irritable bowel syndrome. And part of his Secret Service retinue was a van with a toilet in it Mm -hmm. just in case Mm -hmm. and this is again this is all true the the code was go november wow so when a guy said into a sleeve rawhide honey go november November. yeah and i tried to figure out where they came (laughs) from rawhide was his name right service name but i was wondering maybe that's because november is the 11th month and one plus one is two like i'm trying to oh yeah (laughs) you spent a lot of time thinking about but i also wonder like did he pick do they go in when you're elected and go okay you can be rawhide silver star Travel like you get to pick your. I think it's like names? Reservoir Dogs. Or do they just give it? I to think you? that guy just shows up and yeah. goes, "You're Mr. Pink. Yeah. You're Mr. Brown. You're President Mr. Black. You're President about your hobo penis. Right, I, I don't right. want to be look for your own good. Yeah. Right. They would never imagine that you're a hobo penis. <laughs> yeah. Well, they should yeah. do the same thing. And your with, wife with, is baby raper. They should do it with uh, <laughs> like what they did with GW. Just call it. Was it 51? Right. Each president just gets a number. And Washington, you're one. The uh, mm-hmm. president and first lady, their na- code names always start with the same letter. Mm. Oh, really? That's a fact. That's toy. I'm a fact toyed. I like the number thing, too. I think it's more practical. Yeah. And why not? And then it's good because when you're going back and you're trying to reference things, right. and like TV episodes, you know, you don't name, you give them numbers. Yeah. Because you don't know because when someone goes, remember that time uh, Rawhide was out there? And you're like, uh, which one? But if you said... 44, 46, or whatever it is, then everyone could do the math on mm. it. But if the mm. Secret Service didn't like you, then it would be like, what's your service code name, honey? Vagina full of throw-up? What did <laughs> I ever do to those guys? <laughs> and it's hard to get it full. Usually it starts to spitter back out mm-hmm. when you're halfway there. Mm-hmm. Well, you can get it full if they're working with you. Uh, Dana, <laughs> you... Uh, That's magic. You, uh, I, I know Huel Hauser, one of your heroes, passed. Ah, I know. Oh, that's right. My Twitter feed. I, I know. <laughs> if it's possible, all of my Twitter feed to light up. Yes. <laughs> Mine, too. And KCET yeah. emailed me and asked me if I wanted to write, like, a, a memoriam to Huel for their website. And I was like, have you heard what I did? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. Maybe I, I sort of stepped back off that. Maybe just let the man have his yeah. day. Yeah. Sure, I said he was a child molesting murderer, but <laughs> he loved trails. I, what am I going to say? It got a little dark. Couldn't be I must more say. dead. Dana took it in a, uh, in a dark direction. Stuff. He got, he got, na- he was an entertainment weekly. Yeah. Look, he was a lovely person. Mm. He, he was a lovely guy. He's you like roller coasters, motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> now, was who is that? Um, that can't be me. You got to, uh, by the way, I, I this this shit was so funny. We uh, well, I don't think we have well, not to stop this, doing it. Not, <laughs> yeah, we don't. Hugh he, can be in heaven. Hugh can be in heaven. Uh, hey, Blanken. <laughs> clock's not started. <laughs> by Number the way. fourteen. <laughs> uh, the uh, now oh. that's a that's a hat. Let's see yeah. what you got <laughs> under there. Jesus Christ! <laughs> that There's is a true. bullet wound in your head. Yes, so, I know. It's a historical fact that I was shot in the head. <laughs> Dana Gould, what you're saying, you're saying two things. Mm. One is, you're saying if Huel Hauser's mind was blown b- 
buy a menudo factory in the San Fernando Valley. Yes. Wait till he gets to heaven. Uh, yes. And he hangs out with Kennedy and Jimi Hendrix and, every, and yeah. all, every luminary that's ever lived. Right. And actually gets to talk uh, to Sorry, the, every straight luminary, every straight luminary that's, that's ever lived. But what, what I envision happening is that he would, there would be like JFK, Bobby Kennedy, Elvis Presley, Martin Luther King, and Jimi Hendrix. They're just mm. sitting around, they're, you know, leaning against an apple tree, mm-hmm. having a chat. Huel walks by, and then he goes, oh, my God, look who it is. That's Pablo Rotundo. He was the man who originally thought to sweep up a trail with a broom. Right. And he would just blow He'd past, go right past yeah, just- He'd see Doug Henning in <laughs> Doug. his jumpsuit. Yeah. Is Doug dead? Can I we confirm that? I'd be nice. Uh, he'd see Elvis in his or jumpsuit. If he's not he'd see dead, evil he's, in his jumpsuit. He'd see evil. I think Doug is dead. And the problem with Doug, Doug had a jumpsuit. He had uh, one ju- <laughs> That <laughs> It's magic. I got to tell you, in that triptych, away. evil passed away. Evil is the is the badassest of the three. Well, here's the thing about evil's jumpsuit. He, it was a necessary evil. Yes. Pardon the pun. Mm-hmm. I mean. They're, they're kind of like those guys who who ride around in the cycling outfits, but they're not really sponsored by Shinzano or anything, mm-hmm. and they're fat, and you don't need to be in that. He needed a leather jumpsuit for business. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it was part of his business. Yeah, yeah. It's recommended. Right. When you're going to hit the floor of the Astrodome at 90 miles an hour, <laughs> it's nice to be wearing more than just, like, uh, some boxer briefs oh, no, and a white the pant, beater. Oh, no, the pants and a shirt, the pants are coming off. They're flared. Now the shirt is working with the pants Yeah, there's something on. called road rash, and he got that in a big way. And leather, or leathers, like guys who rode bikes back then wore leathers. Like, you had to because you're going to at some point, meet the pavement. But he was really, his job was having spectacular crashes. Mm -hmm. In success, he was a failure. Yes, (laughs) that's exactly right. That's I couldn't have put a better reason. He... At his peak, it was just near death exercise after near death. He yeah. was really the Andy Dick of motorcycles. Yeah, was just never the, thought about that. We had a kid in my neighborhood who was a little off, and uh, he on Halloween, Hold every on. Halloween, he Greg, would do. I, I got to jump in. Yeah, that was you. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, I'm. No one wanted to say anything, but when you're talking about that kid in your neighborhood yeah. who was a little off, yeah. That that was you. Wait, I'm so off that I talk you, about myself in the third person. You don't know you're that kid in the neighborhood. It was a little off. Now there may have been another kid who was a little less off that no, you have a story kid, about. That's the kid I meant. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, when I say a story about me being off, mm-hmm. I just bark. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> I tell the story and bark. Okay. This kid used to dress up and he would do a stunt every Halloween, like he would jump over trash cans on his BMW, sure. and he was true to form. Would Wait, BMX fall on his bike. face. A BMX bike. Right. And he would fall and crash, and we'd cheer. And he used to charge us. There were tickets. And it was like it was like a fucking Encyclopedia Brown story. It was like a quarter to get a ticket. Right. And, he, and the hardest part was that nobody would really pay. Like three people would pay a quarter, and everybody else would be like, sure. what are you going to do? Kick right, us out? Right. And then he'd fall on his face. And uh, it was very – he's probably, he's probably working in a jumpsuit right now. Mm-hmm. Picking up trash, though. Yeah. And there's a great – my favorite part of those crashes is there's silence before the first – vocal uh, expression of pain because they're out of breath and you know what's happening is that their brain is calculating how much pain they're in so yeah. it sort of shuts down all the other we can't talk we're working on this right now so you just get to ow yeah. yeah there's yeah. a great lag time if you've ever seen the video of the woman falling the off wine. the wine yeah that's yeah, the and greatest also ever. There, there's it like football stomping grapes yeah. Yes. Like football, when you go down, there's some drama that every every Mississippi that goes by is a bigger ovation when you stand up. Mm-hmm. If you're Evil Knievel That's right. and you go down on the Astrodome floor, if you spring up, uh, right. golf clap. That's right. Give no, me a no. minute. I'm right. fucking on my feet. And then there's the ones where he would insist on talking. <laughs> that was the best yeah. one. Where he'd go to Frank Gifford. Give I'm me never that doing mic. this again. Give me that mic. <laughs> I'm never doing this again. No, no. <laughs> he'd talk about himself. And you have seen Evil Knievel yeah. jump his, uh, sorry, attempt to jump his last double-decker bus. That's a, the 13 Evil. double-deckers in London. And every, every once in a while, he would get into kids and drugs and dope. And it was just fucking right. excellent because he had a 1,000 Percocets and a half yeah. bottle of Jack Daniels going through his veins at that particular <laughs> yeah. time. But he would be like, kids. 
<laughs> you're going to smoke dope. Then the evil Knievel doesn't want you in his scramble van. His scramble van. <laughs> <laughs> we have we have the the chick falling off the of the that thing. What done is right here. These buckets are filled with grapes. It's... What kind of grapes? But listen for the lag. Listen for the lag when she falls. This Saturday, who stomps the most juice will actually win an overnight stay here. She say juice? You ready? Ready to try it? Yeah, sure. Let's go. Not to stomping the juice. Yeah, I don't. I don't completely condone that. So what's the deal here? There's a contest to stomp, and how are you measuring who does the best stomping? For the most juice. Whoever stomps the most juice wins an overnight stay, but it's not the only thing you can do. The measuring cups are down below, right? Measuring cups are down below. No, they're above us, defying gravity. If you if you win, you get to Three, stay at Chateau Alon. And what two, else do you have going on here? One. Well, if you're coming for your thing, you can come and spend the day listening to live music. Nothing better than local news, food, is there? Yeah. Having wine tours and tasting. It's the one on the right, tours, isn't it? Vineyard tours, seminars. Oh, this is where the, this is the fun it's of it. It's a lot of fun, a whole day. Stop. Uh-oh. Oh, stop. Oh, 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 it's not oh, funny. I can't breathe. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, 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 better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. You know what she sounds like? The little doll that chased Karen Black around the apartment. The voodoo doll? Oh, Trilogy yeah. of Terror? Yeah. I mean, what? The Zuni I fetish. read. The Zuni fetish doll from yeah. Trilogy of Terror, written yeah. by Richard Matheson, produced by Dan Curtis? Yeah. I'm sorry. Or yes. every first anal scene for a runaway. <laughs> <laughs> Why a runaway? Can't it just be somebody with a career choice? <laughs> See, now, oh, at oh. that point, if my femur had poked out and... Oh, is that what happened to Jeremy? No. <laughs> I'm saying if my femur... If I had a femur that was sticking out of my asshole and a rib that had come out of one ear, you would have heard a, I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> Go to break, yeah, and then yeah. the bellowing would have begun. But yeah. I would have, I would have sucked it up for at least a three Mississippi until they tossed it back to the fucking home office. So. It is weird because she did seem like a consummate professional, <laughs> <laughs> and she also did the thing that made it perfect, which is she did a, she did this move where she went, she went, um, okay, no more, time's up, and then she went, I'm going to just get in some extra, yeah. and she did a little pitter-patter yeah, foot yeah. move and then fell one yeah, ass yeah, over yeah. tea kettle. I, I, we have Evil Knievel, by the way, doing the anti-drug uh, speech. I will say, just to. before you roll that, that if there was, if they brought that grape juice to fruition and made wine, that clip is so famous, you could sell those bottles for <laughs> $5,000. Oh, yeah, forgot about that. Now, is this from Viva Knievel? There's yes. T- there's two Evil Knievel movies. One with George Hamilton. Playing Evil Knievel. Yes. And then there's one where Evil Knievel plays Evil Knievel. That's Viva Knievel. Uh, the, the roster of Evil of, of Viva Knievel. The, the peop, the, the, it's like red buttons. Uh, it's the Smokey and the Bandit uh, It's gang. the craziest. Yeah. I mean, it's one day. Okay. Fre- uh, like like uh, um, Gene Kelly. Like, it's the craziest group. We'll, I swear to God, we'll get, we'll get the IMDb of that. But. It starts off with him going to a children's hospital and handing out evil Knievel toys. It's like, like the premise of the movie is he's Jesus. Right. He's just he's helping poor people. He's healing sick children. All right. So here's here's his speech. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be with you here in Long Beach today and with my old pal Frank Gifford. <laughs> you know, I see a lot of young people here in the stands today. So before I make the jump, there's something that I'd like to say to you. It's been bothering me for a long time. I go to Indianapolis every year to see the Indy 500. I go there with friends to drive and race. Normally when a plane, when when a Cessna flies overhead, they yell, cut it. They usually have to go as fast as they possibly can to get a front row position. They put nitro in their car instead of the fuel it's intended to be in the cars so that their cars will go faster. And they do for five or ten laps. Uh Uh-oh. And then they blow all the hell. Uh Uh-oh. It's a metaphor, people. And you people, you kids, if you put nitro in your bodies in the form of narcotics so that you can do better, or so that maybe you think you can do better, Marjo Gortner, Leslie Nielsen, and that guy that's in everything. Yes. And then you'll blow all the hell. You're a wonderful crowd. I'm glad that you're Thanks all for pumping us out, Evil. I'm going to do my best to make it. Right across this jump. 
Thank and now, you. now another serious message from a guy in a cape. Yeah, I've, I've been brought here today to stand in front of the world's ugliest building. <laughs> I think there's people in the audience holding balloons. I yeah. See that I want to see By if he's going to make this jump. Can we just please? Listen, <laughs> you start smoking pot, uh, your lifestyle may de deteriorate in the next 30 to 40 years, but you eat shit on a Harley jumping uh, 18 school buses, your life is going to deteriorate very quickly. Why has there not been an Evil Knievel movie made like modern day biopic? That'd be a great movie. I think the problem is they already made two. But that, that I know. doesn't date it. I, I haven't even heard of them. Uh, I, I, you, you must read the lineup of, oh, he's jumping lions. <laughs> By the way, let me say this. Well, what did you think he was jumping? Well, there used to be a lot of stuff where it's like he's jumping piranhas or he's jumping yeah. lions. If Lauren what, Hutton is it, in that movie. What, wow. If whatever you're jumping, wow. you will either startle or kill if you land on them. It doesn't really count. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> There's no danger yeah. in you crushing a lion. Like, I'm sure if the lions are just wandering around, they don't have much of a context. They're not like, hey, everyone get ready. The this asshole's going gonna gonna to jump us, and if he comes yeah. up short, we're going to eat him. In yeah. the it's last just, moment of a lion's life, it gives you the fish eye. That's yeah, basically like, what happened. You, if you came up short over a pen of lions, you would probably kill one lion Confuse the fuck out of the rest of them. But either way, they would not pounce. They'd be like, who? No, you'd be the new king of the jungle. Yeah, they'd be like some fucking super lion fell yeah. from the sky <laughs> right, and killed right. the leader of the pride. Yeah, it's the same way if I go into the hood, I take out the biggest guy. That's right. I'm Johnny Mac. Not even that. You land on his head. Right, <laughs> right. He's talking to a bunch of other crips, and all of a sudden you just fall off a 10-story building and land with, on with him. With a cape on. Right. 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 <laughs> with a jumpsuit and cape with your initials on it. Due fits doggia. That's it's called right. in Latin. <laughs> the, right. The rest of the crips would at least be scared momentarily. Enough time to get out Enough of town. Enough time to yeah. get out of town. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But we should still try it just to make sure it's true. Is the plot of Viva Knievel that he got framed? He by uh, for a crime he didn't commit. There plot. must or is that this an evil movie, twin? This There's movie be some kind of plot. I ask you for more range <laughs> from a cast standpoint. I want more range than Evil Knievel, Gene Kelly, Lauren Hutton, Red Buttons, Leslie Nielsen, Cameron Mitchell, and Frank Gifford. And that's just there's more. It goes deeper. I you love don't that get Lauren deeper than Lauren Hutton, who was in To Have and Have Not, yes. his third below Evil Knievel. <laughs> Un fucking believable. Daphne Coleman. That's right. Wow. Daphne Coleman. He fits you, in there perfectly. You can't do it. Marjo Gortner, who was a giant yes. star in the 70s. You cannot, you cannot do this. Um, th the story was he played Evil Knievel and he gave away presents to kids in a hospital. On Christmas Day. On Christmas Day at the beginning, and then somebody had, like, rigged his bike. Somebody had sab... Remember, there was... 70s were a lot of sabotage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of, like, somebody cut those brake lines. Like, mm -hmm. now, when you want someone killed, you just kill them. Right. Like, you just hire some guy, and you give him a 1000 bucks, and he kills your wife. You don't go cut her brake lines, or you do mm -hmm. something where it's like, once the, this, you know, this bomb is triggered by altitude, and once he gets above 40 feet, it's going to blow. Like, right. there's a lot of that in the 70s, and no one ever raised their hand and went, he's a drunk. And I know where his hotel is. So once he passes out, we'll yeah. just put the pillow over his head. Send an exploding prostitute. He's a right. hormone. That's right. That's right. But it was the same way we saw the CIA work. Do you ever read about how they tried to kill Castro? They, yes. They had a guy go in to become a chef at a restaurant he liked to try to poison him. Mm. How do you even coordinate which fucking waitress is going to his table? And right. they would spend fucking a year Setting up a plan like that. Yeah. Never got him. It's in pre-production. Tom Cruise is that waiter. Okay, so the plot of Evil Knievel is actually a lot more complicated. <laughs> well, let's Motorcycles, call it layered, by the way. Motorcycle stuntman Evil Knievel is offered a fortune to perform in Mexico. <laughs> what Evil doesn't know is that they're planning to kill him <laughs> and use his body to ship cocaine into the U.S. <laughs> That old pitch. That's, right that's out of the very gate. Huel Hauserian as performed by it's you. True, but that's right. Right out of the gate, they're doing something so complicated. Yeah. <laughs> They've managed to take a simple task. And why? what if we get a nobody and put some balloons of coke in his ass? I'll do you one better. 
<gasps> we'll drug kill meal. one of the most famous people in America. <laughs> well, listen, stuff his body with cocaine. I don't want to shit on your point, Dana, but how else are we going to get cocaine from Mexico <laughs> exactly. to the U.S.? And then I want to know part two when evil is safely back and somebody has to go into Griffith Park and go, excuse me. We just need to cut open Evil Knievel and get some stuff. <laughs> then right. you can do what you need to do. Yeah, then you can bury him. That's yeah. always my theory. It's you, you don't think this through to the end. Survivalists who have packed their homes with guns and cans of food waiting for Armageddon. Mm-hmm. The, I want to survive Armageddon just to watch these guys come together and pick a leader. Yeah. yeah, that ought to be yeah. good. That'll yeah. be the biggest circular firing squad. First order business. Uh, it's going to be a long wait before we get another black guy <laughs> at the tip of the spear. <laughs> Pun intended. So you just go ahead and sit down, Cedric. Yeah. I That's going to be a while. It's going to be a long yeah. fucking Cedric time. Cedric the entertainer? Cedric, Cedric, just Cedric. And he's running for office. He's the one he's black then, survivalist. Yeah. He's now Cedric Sorry. the survival. There's a new white sheriff in town. It's going to be a while. All right? Forget about hope and change. How about uh, you go ahead and change my tires, put snow tires on the truck. There we go. And I uh, hope I don't rape your old lady tonight. <laughs> now, first order business. I don't trust these survivalists, and I'll tell you why. They're hoping for Armageddon. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we all sit around. Like, we all know what we should do for an earthquake at our house, but none of us do it. That little stickum stuff we should be putting on the vase, the urn that's on the shelf, and all the wiring and all the junk and the stuff put aside. But no one really does anything. Yeah, I'm not hoping to have to get the flashlights and peanut butter. All right, but if I took a, a good, you know, if I spent five grand and spent a couple of weeks on completely earthquake proofing my house, I'd kind of be hoping for an earthquake mm-hmm. just to make my effort worth. Otherwise, I'm a sucker. If there's never an earthquake, I'm just out five grand and got that weird sticky butte but stuff on the bottom. Do you have a generator? Every... I did. See, we and... have a generator. But my concern is if we're the only house in the neighborhood with the lights on. That's right. Ugh. That's what yeah. happened to my right. uh, my brother-in-law during the hurricane. Right. He had it wired out to four different houses in his neighborhood, and he had to keep waiting in line. To get the gas to put into the generator. Right. So all of his fucking right. neighbors could sponge off him. Right. Right. So if you are the guy with the bunker and with the canned goods and with all the banana clips, you're kind of hoping for some Armageddon. Otherwise, you've wasted 50 grand and all the drilling you've done with the family. Mm-hmm. And like, right. 30 seconds to get to the bunker. Right. Go time. Go time. Go. Yeah. You know, and put the weed down. Get in the bunker. Thir- you got 30 seconds. I don't know, Not by the way. Not only that, all the yes. people who've looked at you like you're crazy. Just would, you wait. Yeah, I would always have a lot of questions. Like, here's why we could never do one of these movies. You know those movies? I always think about this. You know those movies? I go, they sit in the car. They're, like, in the van outside of the bank. And the guy, the lead guy, Swayze or whoever, Mark Wahlberg or whoever, whoever the lead guy is, Ben Affleck. It's hard to tell because they all have Nixon yeah. masks on. Yeah, and they go, <laughs> listen, minute 30. Minute 30, in and out. You got me? Minute 30. And I, I'd i be the guy raising his hand going, how is that set in stone? <laughs> <laughs> how do you know, A, it's not 20 minutes, like every cop is just down at Occupy whatever, fucking shooting pepper spray <laughs> on hippies, or... A worst case scenario, there's four cops who went in just to make a deposit on their lunch break. Yeah. Where did you get this arbitrary <laughs> in and out minute 30? Yeah. They're never a good answer because for that. Because it's the exact right time for a scene in a right. movie. Right, exactly. Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. And but then at some point, like it means something, a guy's pointing at his watch at 20 seconds. They should do that for every scene in every bad movie. Mm-hmm. Keep it, have a guy with a watch going minute 30 until you kiss her. Right. right. It's too long. The scene's not working. Right. Minute 30 until your boss fires you. Right. Yeah. You went long. Tarantino, minute 30. Well, that black guy being eaten by dogs. <laughs> it's going way too long. <laughs> You've got 30 minutes to realize that you're in love with your best friend and not with your fiance. Go. If you're going to smuggle drugs into the United <laughs> States right. from Mexico in the body of a famous person. Yes. Shouldn't you find the fattest? Uh Famous person around. Yes. John Goodman has gone to yeah. Mexico. It was, se- it was 1977. Mm-hmm. Raymond Burr. Uh huh. Orson Welles. Orson Welles was still alive. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't think that's too obvious? Shouldn't it have been Viva Wells? Yes. Uh, William, the guy who played Cannon. William Conrad. William Conrad. Star of, also star of Jake and the Fat Man. Has gone to Guadalajara Which for a he? taco eating contest. <laughs> You know what I mean? Uh huh. Have it fat related. Right. Victor Buono has taken right. the train to TJ. Mm hmm. 
no, something you're missing, terrible has happened. Cannon you're missing the, was Cannon. We we used to have we had an, a really old PI in Buddy Epson, Barnaby Jones, and we had a fat PI in Cannon. Right. Mm -hmm. Those were those. Those were those. And those Barnaby the Jones would chase. Since this is a video podcast, I will do my impression of. Uh, it was actually Mar. Uh, this is. Uh, uh, I love it's a bit that's not going to pay off because it's physical, and he's taking the yeah, time. Yeah, I'll, do, right. I'll no, do it do later. It. No. I'll do it for you later. <laughs> I'll do it for right. you later. You're right. missing the point of stuffing Elvis with the Coke because the real payoff is not just getting the Coke, but everybody snorts it out of his asshole. You right. just keep passing Elvis around. I think <laughs> stuffing Elvis with Coke might have been redundant. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he was actually impacted supposedly with over 50 pounds of uh, feces. Not a joke. Really? Yeah, that's part of what killed him. Wow. A lot of his problems. The drugs that he How took. How much of that was his own feces? Who, yeah, whose was it? 44 <laughs> 44, <pounds. laughs> so six pounds? <laughs> six more pounds, fecal matter there? Six pounds of guest feces. <laughs> All right, we will. <laughs> guest feces. <laughs> who's Rod Stewart's? We'll, uh, <laughs> we will uh, take ourselves a break. Dana Gould is here. Fitz Dog is here, Greg Fitzsimmons. Ah, I should tell uh, people uh, he's doing some live shows, 24th through the 27th, Off the Hook Comedy Club. Oh, Marco Island, Florida, what? The Southern Tour in the next three weeks. Beautiful. And uh, Fitz Dog Radio, uh, you can check out it uh, at iTunes and all that good stuff. Uh, we'll take a quick break, then we'll all just jump in on the news next. The News with Allison Rosen. She read some news from her iPad. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. It's Allison, Allison. And when it's time to wrap it up, she'll sign it off with zip it cut. It's Allison, Allison. So it seems that Beyonce lip synced the national anthem oh. at the inauguration yesterday. This huge news for mm -hmm. people who care, and it's like, who cares for uh, for me? Well, there's a thing where it's always 11 degrees, and so they go, it's too cold to do, or the wind is too whatever. The thing is that Kelly Clarkson and the other performers did perform live. Uh-huh. But, um, yeah, I mean, they talk about other times that people have mm. lip-synced uh, because well. it's cold, and they have the tracks there just in case there's you know instrument failure or it is too cold. Mm -hmm. The thing is that the band evidently also like pretended to play. I don't, uh, and by the way, I would do it, but I would use Whitney Houston's voice. You know what I mean? From the Super Bowl. Yeah. That would be funny. I would just go, paging Mr. Herman, paging <laughs> P.W. Herman. It is a 12 octave range, that song. It was, mm -hmm. as Robert Klein said, it was written for a goose. <laughs> <laughs> I see she took out her earpiece at one point and people are pointing to that moment as like it was so ingenious of her because it makes it look like she's doing something wh where she's listening. But she was not. Oh, yeah. First off, I don't mind. It, it's sort of like a hot chick with a little bit of a crooked tooth. Like I don't need perfection in all live performance. I like a little I don't necessarily say a flub. But I like to hear a little crack in the voice oh. and a little whatever. Now I see where it, you're it, going. It, it make, it's the difference between yes, a, a she's live veneers. show. Yeah, it's the difference between watching a live show and listening to your iPod, you know? I yeah, like the, a little. But you fuck up the national anthem. You're not a bad singer. You're anti American. That's the fear. Right. It yeah. can wreck your fucking career if you blow that. Do you think do you think Obama is a big Kelly Clarkson fan, or they just went, eh, we got a black chick, no, we can't. I want Roberta Flack. Eh, <laughs> we need <laughs> another, need we got to get a blonde to kind of balance the thing Michelle out. says nothing too hot. Uh, right. <laughs> That's right. I Kelly's think they went to Benjamin Moore and matched the skin tone of her and Obama, because it yeah. would look good with him in the background. Uh, interesting. If you went to Benjamin Moore, where you can give him like a little swatch of your curtain or your sofa or your mm. dog skin or something. I mean... Uh, <laughs> It would have been great once, if Ben but, led to your dog skin. But they will match it in the their color match computer. Right, and then right. Beyonce, that's interesting. Obama and Beyonce may be the exact same color. Yes. And delicious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, would you call that like a caramel? Mm -hmm. It's a caramel, but then when you bite into it, yeah. it's all coconut. It's a, yeah, it's I, a craft <laughs> fudgy <laughs> level of. Uh, I she's heard sp beautiful, oh, like cokey, chocolatey, that I just. Put a little dollop of my own whipped cream on top. Yeah. You know? you know what <laughs> <laughs> They're milk Wait, chocolate. I got to see the two oh, of them. I imagine like a Cadbury cream egg. Um, I heard Who's darker right now? 
Who's darker? Who's darker? Like he is. He's yeah. darker. She's got a, an orangish hue. Well, she's, see, I heard speculation. I heard yeah. speculation yeah. that he had used bronzer. <laughs> He, he used bronzer? I, yes. that's. I heard – well, I, I read articles that were guessing that perhaps he had used bronzer because he had a more golden tone mm. than a picture they were comparing it to. I feel like that very much could have been the Don't light. You, hey, go put that picture back up if you can. Is it, is it the, the one before? Don't you think eventually we'll just arrive? Charles Schumer. Very nice, Beyonce. <laughs> very, and look at how orange John Boehner is to the left of Charles yes. Schumer. That He's oranger orange. than that woman's scarf. Yeah. I think at a certain point, we're just going to arrive on the correct color for a human being. Which is? Somewhere around Beyonce in full makeup. Yeah. You know what I mean, I don't know what her ass yeah. looks like in the morning. But yep. what I'm saying is if with the full, she is altering her tone a little bit mm-hmm. via whatever makeup she's putting on. But I'm saying this. Ferraris look best in red. Right. Nobody likes an orange Ferrari. Yeah. Like, there is a an appropriate color Cops for do. the shape <laughs> of a Ferrari. Hmm. And there's a shape. It's sort of interesting. But an Aston Martin looks best in Aston Martin racing green. And Ferraris look good in Ferraris. And British cars look good in British racing. They're almost the, the shape look of the car. And humans look best in I think you would say for animals and things like that, there's, you know, cheetahs look good in their color pattern. Mm-hmm. I'd say human beings have an ideal color pattern, uh, you know. Andy Warhol is not the ideal right. color, and uh, Yafit Koda is probably not the ideal yeah. color. But there's bowl. there's a color in there, and it may be Beyonce. Like we all just may be evolving into that color, that or not, not just evolving. We have to social engineer it. Like if your father is Italian and your mother is Mexican, oh yeah, you got to fuck a black guy. Oh no, you would have to fuck a, a charcoal briquette. Yeah. Right. Like you could not. Nobody you that had any any. any yeah, we. I think it might be too late for him. Black hole. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. would have to go into outer yeah. space. <laughs> yes. I have a lot. We have generations of making up to do. Shirley Hemphill would be your, your <laughs> only possible partner, and I know she's passed, but that's just an excuse. Shirley an excuse. Hemphill. <laughs> Shirley Hemphill in heaven, and Hugh Hauser in heaven. They meet. It's like he meets his own photo negative. <laughs> uh, what's interesting about that photo too is be, uh, Obama is standing directly beyond behind Beyonce, and he's. Smart. He right. is a smart person. And I can tell you, knowing that there are 7,000 cameras on him, the only thought in his mind right now is don't look at her ass. Yeah. Don't look right. at her ass. Don't yeah. look at her yeah. ass. Not mm-hmm. even for a second. Don't look at her ass. Because that's all it ass. takes. One millisecond yeah. snap, they right. got it. There's right. the whole inauguration story. Right. But she has to know that if the band was fake playing and she was fake singing, that it would be a matter of hours before we all found out about this, right? Because there's no more getting away with anything how do we know yeah. she was doing this but also the earpiece i mean the marine band people who it. sing mm-hmm. live well, have earpieces on because you need it for your monitor the weird thing is that the marine band gave sort of contradictory stories because first it came out that they did play but then there was a reporter who said that he was standing right there like very close to the saxophone he didn't hear anything Mm. And then I was thinking about it, and there's no way that they would use a pre-recorded vocal track with a band playing the song unless they practiced the two of them together. Because what if the pace is off? Mm-hmm. I think that's pretty common, though. I've heard that like the, the backing track kind of fades in and out depending on if you're off pitch or if you're well, whatever. Yeah, if, when you see a big band like the Beach Boys or even with U2, they have other bands. There are other musicians that are in the mix to fill out that sound. Mm. There's literally a band under the band. My favorite part about the Beach Boys is Mike Love in his hat that says the Beach Boys. Yes. I can never get over the fact <laughs> that he is in a band that has probably sold as many records as, you know, the Who yeah. or Elvis sell. or uh, you can possibly sell. I mean, they're, they're celebrating their 60th year, I think. Mm. One of the biggest, uh, biggest American band maybe ever. Yes. And he... N- feels the necessity to go out on stage with the rest of the Beach Boys wearing a hat that says the Beach Boys and never is without a hat, without the name of his band on it. And I, the, I don't feel like Wilco would ever do yeah. that. And the nanosecond the anniversary tour was over, in true Beach Boys fashion, he fired them and now they're all suing each other. <laughs> right. well, it was a that, thing that, of beauty. But here's what I want to say about this. I understand... He has a bad impulse to put a hat on with the name of his band. And, like, I, look. I mil- like you never wear a Who shirt to the Who concert. Hey, we just saw a picture I, of Elvis Presley with an EP belt buckle. I, I got 
I got a that was that was Evil Knievel with the EK, but EK. I had a Loveline windbreaker when I was doing Loveline on MTV. They gave me like a rain jacket that had the hoodie and the whole thing, but it said Loveline on the back of it, and I couldn't wear it because right. I host the show and I'd look like a dick. Is there anyone else in the band, or does he have a wife? Shouldn't your wife? Isn't it her job? Stockholm syndrome. If you had a big hat that said comedian. <laughs> <laughs> and you were leaving the house. Don't you think your wife would go, honey, slow yeah. down, put the STP hat on instead? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, she'd say if they can't figure it out by your performance. That's right. That's not going to get laughs. That's not going to help you. Yeah. The, the announcer just, first off, everyone bought a ticket. It's not like I'm, I'm going to a concert. Who's playing? I don't know. I got to check the guy's hat. <laughs> <laughs> I bought a Beach Boys ticket I bought six months ago on StubHub. Do you know? Who, yeah. Where you're going, right? Yeah. No confusion. I mean, it wouldn't be like you're watching the Beach Boys and then going, what's that one guy singing Good Vibrations? Who's he? I don't see any name of a band on his hat. Gonna, there would be no confusion. You're going to find this hard to believe Mike Love married five times. What? He's going to divorce four times. Well, it's probably, hard, probably hard to get along with. Maybe He's, one of his wives yeah. got a little mouthy about, about the cat. The hat. Yeah. About probably the hat. what happened. I mean, on the first date with the new wives, he mm -hmm. puts it right out there on the table. Mm -hmm. No discussion That's, of the hat. Here's a hat it's says, just my thing. His first date hat says finger blast. <laughs> <laughs> in the in the and in the world of uh, Beach Boys super fandom, you know, of the music nerd Beach Boys, uh, Mike Love is widely reviled. Oh, really? It's it's a it's, it's not, a it's very uh, it's too simplistic. Anybody who wears anything with their logo and name on it and then out feel feels weird to me. Feels self. -serving. Unless you're on a sports team, right? And then you kind of you have your name to. on the back of your jersey, right? It's right. even though it's but it's better if it's a name of a band like. John Mayer couldn't wear a hat that says, John Mayer. Mm. No. No, he could not. <laughs> he but I feel the, like he would. He has a finger blast hat, too. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. he's, he has more than one. He's finger he's blasted, blasted so digit. many times, he's actually worn a finger down. He's actually, yeah. It's mm -hmm. affecting his plan. Yeah. yeah. He's literally he has to say to dates, I cannot finger blast you tonight. Yeah. I have a concert tomorrow. I've worn my fingers down to nubs on vaginas <laughs> like your own, yeah. mostly celebrity vaginas, and I can't even fucking, I, I cannot do the, there I are, have to get the cape out. There I can't are play midwives anymore. that are envious of his finger blast. That's tally. right. Yeah. That's right. He loves third base. Mm -hmm. He's the third baseman. That's is right. that what third base is? Oh, yeah. Third base is finger be, blast. Next album be the hot corner. Well, <laughs> I, I feel like I'm going to have to have this conversation because obviously the bases are getting rearranged. I mean, they're getting yeah right first base. Like uh, my to my kid when they get to high school, first first base will be like dry anal rape. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> second base now. Second base now is anal gangbang. I right. know that. Right. Anal only gangbang. Mm -hmm. Just a waste base. of my time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's home run? What ha What happened to your eyes, sweetie? I was trying to leg out a bukkake. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't make it. Trying uh, to stretch a bukkake yeah. into A home third. run is when you get all of her skin off. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, <laughs> that's right. You you make a real, real doll. Yeah, you have beautiful skin. Look better on the floor. You got that's that right. right. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's home run. That, yeah. I don't hate a guy. That skin is very We're becoming not. on you. That's right. Uh, and uh, speaking of musical treasures, mm -hmm. Justin Bieber, Monday night, surpassed Lady Gaga as the person on Twitter with the most followers. Oh, God. Can I say most this? Most followers of anyone on Twitter. Here's, uh, here's, here's, the, um, here's the thing. Like, it's a different medium, right? Like, meaning he's a, a good singer hmm. or, or a pop singer. People like his. A good but, pop star. But you, if. But if he wrote a comedy book, you wouldn't yeah, want to read it. You no. know what I mean? Yeah, and I so, don't know what he's tweeting. But that's my whole point. Like, there, there are people out there that were big Dale Earnhardt fans. Yeah. But if he said, I have a book of poems, <laughs> you wouldn't be like, I got to read that. Yeah. You'd be like, See, he's not I good would, at that. And I would argue that his 33.333 million followers aren't big readers. Okay. But I want to hear what he has to sing, not what he has to say. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I feel yeah. like all those people on Twitter who are following him don't wake up and they're like, ooh, got to see what everyone's saying on Twitter. Like, there's a lot of people just follow in a very passive way. Yeah, really, the only guy tweeting should be Stephen Wright. Right. 140 yeah, right. character jokes, perfect. That's right. right. Perfect. Right. He's probably got 2,000 followers. Yeah, he has a forehead for tweeting. He has a head for tweeting hey, and a forehead. Hey, wait a for, minute. Sorry, for tweeting as well. Now, who now, is that? Is that Lady Gaga? Yes, and she has 
33.329, sorry, 33.329 million followers. Right. And if, followed if, if, by if Oscar Wilde was alive or Ben Franklin, they'd mm-hmm. be, have like 750 Yeah, And they would something. not be verified. Right. Uh, followed by Katy Perry with 31.4 million. And then Rihanna, it's a lot of pop stars, 27.9. And then Obama with 26.1 million. I'm going to say something about Justin Bieber based on that photo. Mm. He's dreamy. Make, make a pretty good looking chick. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. All hot guys would make hot chicks. And a lot of hot chicks have dude mouths. Oh, y- y- that's my theory. Like, you take, like, young Johnny Depp. He looks like a hot chick. Young yeah. Brad Pitt looks like a hot chick. They, they're good looking. And then a lot of the women that are good looking have a dude esque mouth region, chin and, and mouth. Soul patch. Mm hmm. <laughs> Justin Bieber looks like the the blo- the Bond chick from the Living Daylights. <laughs> oh my! Right. Oh wow! All right. Do we have how are we doing with the uh, Teddy Pendergrass? Uh, by the way, very close. So here's a story that makes me very happy. Go ahead. The TSA is finally mm-hmm. removing those body scanner machines. Oh really? They, okay. There's two types. There's one that's called backscatter, and there's one that's called millimeter wave detection. Dana's uh, daughter has backscatter right now. Yes, yeah, she does. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Well, backscatter machines use Mm -hmm. X-ray, and those are the ones that they're removing. They're the ones that pull up an X-rated image of your body Mm -hmm. versus the ones that they are keeping, which use sound waves, and they pull up sort of a stick figure, and then something lights up, and that shows where you've stashed your drugs. It's like a PG-13. Yeah, you can can see. If you go to adamcola.com, if you're watching this now, you can see the difference. So they're taking out the X-ray ones. Is 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 it really that detailed? Yes. That's why why they're removing them. Them because of privacy concerns, Whoa. but for me, I never like to go through them because I didn't, and I don't know if this makes me smart or if this makes me incredibly paranoid. I don't trust the TSA to calibrate their radiation correctly. Yeah, I think that's true. Mm-hmm. And I'm, that guy has hey, botched a weird circumcision. Ball. He has a, cauliflower penis. He's got a weird ball thing happening. Well, it's also it's the one TSA gig where the manager comes up, your supervisor comes up to you and goes, hey, it's time for your break. And you go, I'm cool. <laughs> I, yeah. And they're like, I got a Lunchable in my lap. I'm yeah. just going to There's I'm a volleyball team through. coming through. Yeah. I think I'll just work through. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, it looks like the Pepperdine women's volleyball team is just, their bus just pulled up. So I got a Lunchable here. Yeah, the, and chi- the flight to China is coming up. I'm, I'm going to stick around. Yeah, I'm going to stick around here. Oh, uh, looks like they're checking luggage. All right, let me sprint <laughs> to the uh, let me sprint to the break room and see, but go ahead and make change. Can you? I'm gonna make change while I'm running and give myself a uh, Dorito sack and I'll be right the fuck back here. I'm cool. Yeah. Okay. First off, how fucking much money does it cost times 200 airports or 500 airports when we go? We're gonna get rid of the multi-million dollar machine and replace it with the other multi-million dollar machine. And these aren't slot machines. Slot machines will pay for themselves in a number of years. Yeah. This is going. I don't know where. I imagine we just find a country that doesn't like their citizens as much yeah. as we like ours China. and send send it off to them. Um, I wanted to share something with you guys just because uh, you're both comedians, and uh, I know I, we had Dag in here, and we did a show with Dag the other day and we taped it and we're going to play it. It'll air on Monday and Dag, you know, likes to improvise and runs into funny shit. Uh, Somehow stumbled into Teddy Pendergrass and he'd never done this before. He's been on the show 30 times and I was laughing so hard that tears were coming from my eyes and I thought I'd play you guys just a little clip. You can look forward to the whole show on uh, Monday with this. Do something like do some old school Isaac Hayes or 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 ooh Teddy Pendergrass. <laughs> oh, I got Turn that. up the lights and light a candle, <laughs> and I will rub you down. Cause you're not that fat. I said, turn it off. <laughs> hey, look here. Can you get some reverb? On? By the way, white guys <laughs> sing about all the stuff they're not gonna do to you. Like I'm not gonna bring you. So that is <laughs> at a certain point. It turned in, I don't know if not going to do to you. Like, I'm not oh, going to bring you down, and I'm not going to follow Even you up. Young dude. girl, yeah. get out of my line. <laughs> black, you're not that tight, and I want. <laughs> black guys sing about what they're going to do to you. Right. I'm going to take guys them all off <laughs> and pound that ass. Put my shoe in your ass. Turn them out. 
I'm gonna box them titties. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if you ever covered I'd like to get to know you. I'd like to get to know you. Before I fuck you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to get to know you. <laughs> Shadow box with your titties. <laughs> Teddy punches him out. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. That would be a funny session, like spanking our gang, whoever fucking, uh, the fucking, is it spanking our gang? Day by day. Oh, and night by night. <laughs> and I no, bust no. a knife uh-huh. in <laughs> your little, little rascals. No. This is just about a young couple kind of grooving on each uh, other's vibe. So you just you know, know, oozing out? Yeah, it's just kind of your background. Uh, just kind of harmonizing. So it's just like, I'd like to get to know you. So and box your big <laughs> titties, mama. Teddy, Teddy, we just like, with just a little Don't harmony. We brought you in here because you can harmonize. Yes, it's, uh, I right, right. I'd like to fuck your sister <laughs> and make her lick your pussy <laughs> while I deep <laughs> dick of the baby. Right, hold on. <laughs> Chad, stop this recording for a second. <laughs> stop recording. <laughs> That, that was, was a condensed version. Yeah, that was we did twenty minutes of, but that was <laughs> Ted, a young Teddy Pendergrass singing background <laughs> vocals, and Just I'd like to get to know, <laughs> <laughs> and not really knowing his place. <laughs> that, also, you're talking about the lameness of white of white lyrics. I'd like to get to know. The you. lamest of all is the Beach Boys in uh, in I Get Around. Uh, my buddies or me are getting, getting real, real well, well known. known. All the bad, bad guys, guys know us and they leave, leave us alone. alone. We they're, pr- they're bragging about being left alone <laughs> by <Yes>. bad guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't want to brag, but you're not a bad guy. He'll leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, They. Uh, the, the thing that was great about the Beach Boys is if you listen to a song like Jack It Up. It's called Jack It Up? Sh- Shut Down, right? It's called Shut Down. Yeah. Shut Down. Tack it up, tack, tack it, it up. up. Sorry, tack it up. Jack it up is a Teddy Pendergrass. Sorry, song. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tack it up is the most specific car-related song I've I've ever heard in my life, and I know a ton about cars. And it's tack called it shut. Up, first of all, tack it up. Do you, do you know even know what tack it up means? No. Tachometer means rev oh, your it. tachometer. Yeah, yeah. So A, everyone's lost with the tack it up part. And then if you... All right, stop there. I said two cool sharks standing side by side. He probably he means a stingray. Oh. I think he's talking about a Corvette, Corvette stingray, stingray, I think. But here we go. Now, 413 is either the gearing of the rear differential or the displacement of the engine, but I think it's the 413 gears in the thing. All right, but it, Mike Love is wearing a hat that says car stuff. All right, you know what that means? No. Declining numbers at an even rate. So he's, he's talking about the Christmas tree on the oh, drag strip coming wow, down. Wow. I mean, you, you need a fucking PhD and a slide rule. Oh, they didn't it, figure this thing out. Wait, let's keep going. Okay. Here. I think that's the rear end again. I, the, this, it's light. It's not getting traction. Okay. So it's it's spinning. But at 413, the rear end is digging in. Power All right, here's where it gets crazy. To get the traction, I'm a ride in the clutch. My pressure plate's burning that machine's too much. The pressure plate is what's between your clutch and the flywheel. Like, you really have to have a graduate degree in automotive engineering. He's talking about a pressure plate. He's talking about slave cylinders and throw out bearings. We need to bleed the brakes. Like, what the fuck? Well, they didn't know anything about cars. They they stumbled into surfing songs. Dennis was the only one that surfed mm-hmm. for, to begin with. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they were from Hawthorne, and they were steeped in that culture. So they thought, well, we'll right. do surfing songs. And then they literally had like a band meeting, like, okay, we get surfing stuff, but we get the rest of the country we got to appeal to. What, uh, what Have are we you heard the song about? I wrote about my Prius? <laughs> <laughs> Can I get the music track? Let's go. Let's do it. And they were literally like, well, well it's cars. got no gears, and it uses no gas. 
When I drive it, I look like an ass. <laughs> Watch out because it doesn't make noise. I'm driving around with all the pretty boys in my Prius, Prius, Prius. I'm not a man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, this pressure plate's burning. He's riding the clutch. Mm. He's got the clutch in, and he's burning up his pressure plate. That which is on purpose? The flywheel. No, I don't think he's doing it on purpose. No. Yeah, and then she got a fuel injected stingray. I, there's more to that. There's even more. Play the rest of that. He's got quad ram induction. Wow. Yeah, he does. <laughs> quad ram induction. He's talking about the uh, intake manifold. He's got quad ram induction. I feel like if he messed up those lyrics, you're the only one who would know. No notice. one would know it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got to say, I was uh, sad. One mechanic in the audience with his overalls. That's not how it goes. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll work it out. I was I was sad because I always hate when they do the car talk, the mechanical stuff in TV shows or movies, and they just fuck it up royally mm. because there's no reason to do that. You can just Google the right answer. Like there'll be the thing where the guy's like, "Oh yeah, she moved. She's got uh, she's got took off the baffles and she's got hollowed out cams." And it's like there's no such thing as a hollowed out <laughs> cam. A cam's just a piece of billet steel that they make to turn the valves, but there's no such thing as a hollowed out cam, but yeah. why would you come up with that? And then why wouldn't you just go fucking Google car talk or something and <laughs> yeah. come up with something that made sense to anyone who knew anything about Meanwhile, cars? Meanwhile, Grey's Anatomy's got a staff of right. medical consultants. Yes. That's right. People have to wait for their surgery because they're, all the doctors are at Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> yeah, I was saddened uh, watching one of my favorite movies, uh, Boogie Nights, when um, – Thomas Jane's character came in and was talking about uh, Wahlberg's uh, Corvette. I just noticed it. I've seen the movie a thousand times, and he was, like, doing 411 limited slip rear, and he's doing the whole thing about the cool with the competition orange and the hand-rubbed la hand lacquer and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then he said, competition cams. Here's what an asshole I am. Uh, that car doesn't have cams. It just says A cam. There's here's, one cam. Here's Push rod theory. engine. V8, Here, yeah. Here's my theory that will bring it back for you. I think it's such a well-written movie. It was written like that to make him look stupid. I Ooh. agree with you. I agree with you. Because he's yeah. a, his character is a kind of an ass. Interesting. He's not a bright guy. But who would get up. that? But someone would no one would get it, and someone would correct him if you're writing the movie for that. Paul Thomas Anderson is that smart. I put my faith in him. I no. you know nah. you know what drives me crazy is a guy who's so anally retentive that when he watches a movie and a mm -hmm. dumb character gets something wrong, it sticks in his craw. Until yeah. he talks about it on a podcast. Well, he could have said Abe Lincoln was our first president, and he would have gotten no complaints no from problems. me. You're no problems that. there. Yeah. No problems there. But if you fuck up the number of cams that are in a V8 <laughs> engine, then we have an issue. Somebody, somebody I know was at the movie Pocahontas, the Disney <laughs> movie, mm -hmm. and they introduced the character of John Smith, and somebody in front of them said, "You think they would have come up with a better name?" <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, do one more story, please. Mm. All right, uh, Phil Mickelson, mm, golf golfer. star. Mm -hmm. Phil, you know how you were saying that um, the Nittany Lions, you always think, is the Nifty Lions? When you were a kid, you always thought that? I, I called the Nittany Lions of Penn State the Nifty Lions as a young child because that's all you can do. You have a sort of spell correct or something in your head as a young kid. You can only you, – you know 11 words – so well, also, whatever. small kids get nervous when you bring up Penn State. Oh, that's a good point, <laughs> yeah. too. Maybe it's a precursor. <laughs> well, this is not that. a feeling. But my yeah. brain only hears Phil Nicholson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nicholson yeah, Mickelson doesn't, it's doesn't, I, doesn't I don't like right. it. But yeah. anyway, he has said that he may leave California because of the high tax rate. I don't get the part where people are paying. I, I'm scared. Like, I'm scared to talk to my accountant. It's, it's one of those things where I don't even want to fucking know. But... They go, well, he'll be paying between 62 and 63 percent. And I think, is it that? That's is it? Is there, is, how much of that is hyperbole? Like, are, is he really that far over 50 percent? Because that's fucking scary. And But as a golfer, why do you have to live anywhere, really? I mean, you just travel around doing yeah. what people pay to do travel to do right. but you get paid to do it that's why all those guys live in florida like all those or vegas N or vegas like all those nba -er guys just live in florida because they don't have to pay whatever tax and then when they get divorced they don't have to pay out to whoever's divorcing them and they're on a fucking plane all the time anyway so what difference does it make 
So then he evidently apologized, and my Twitter feed was lighting up, much like when Jewel died. Why uh, is he apologizing? Apo- right. Okay. Well, so everyone said he apologized, but he didn't really apologize. What he said is, finances and taxes are a personal matter, and I should not have made my opinions on them public. I apologize to those I have upset or insulted, and assure you I intend not to let it happen again. I said it once. I'll say it again. I look at myself as a business. We have a business here. Businesses woo other businesses. I like that word woo. Yes. Well, they you have to woo. Pi- you have to pitch woo. Yeah, you yes. pitch woo, but you pitch a woo, and you get Toyota c- to come set up in your town. And the way you know, if you're um, one of these places where you're trying to get BMW or Toyota come build a big factory in your town, is you go, we'll give you a tax incentive, we'll give you this, and we'll give you that. You don't have to pay this. You don't have to pay that. I feel like there should be an element of wooing for me. You want to be wooed. I'd like to be wooed. I would like other states. I want to woo you. Yeah, but you live here. Who do you represent? I don't want to move to Venice. I, 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 want, to, I want to be wooed. We'd you know like what I mean? you in Venice because, I, you know, there's so much uh, crime, mm-hmm. and I feel like you've got a lot of handguns. Mm-hmm. So we want to woo you to come, you know, not only be a resident, but be sort of a sheriff vigilante ah, type character. Uh-huh. You have a windbreaker or anything? We've got mean, a windbreaker. We're going to put your name on it. you got to sweeten the wooing pot. Okay, uh, we're going to get rid of all the Mexicans for you. No, 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 no. Not all of them. Two will be left behind. Okay. <laughs> you can name them of whatever you choosing? want. You choose them. Okay. One for inside the house, one for outside the house. Inside? Well, how's... Oh, yeah. Okay. Now I got you. I got you. Then we're going to... Right, just to clean up. Right. Keep okay. going. Uh, porn, we have a, a outdoor movie theater uh-huh. across the street from you. Uh-huh. Uh, it's a drive-in, mm. but we're going to show porn uh-huh. facing your house. Oh, can it be seen from the freeway? Because that's always been my dream. <laughs> you can see it from the freeway. So like, the people driving down the 405 can see penetration. Which is amazing because you can't see Venice from the 405, but we're going to build sorry, it that big for you. Could you swing it there out? There you go. Okay, the 10. Yeah. All right, parking. I need parking. Have you heard of underground garages? Subterranean. Subterranean garages? Mm-hmm. All of Venice currently unoccupied because there's no basements. It's mm-hmm. a race track. Ah. So you do a few laps before uh-huh. parking. Throw Plenty a few hot parking. laps before I pull yeah. into, the, yeah. into the castle. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, it's not a castle. It's from Venice. It's a two-bedroom, uh-huh. one bath. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. But a race track. Okay. Uh, it's always damp. I do. <laughs> it's, it's a little I, moldy. Just to sweeten the pot. I don't do, you know, well, first off. What is drunk driving, if you really think about it? You know what I mean? Because, uh, you know, seven Miller Lights does not make Adam Carolla drunk. But from the, you in the eyes of the law. You talking about getting busted for drinking in I, Venice? I'm saying buzz Wait, driving. You got bumpers on your car? Yeah. You're good. I'm yeah. good. You're good. Venice mm. is full of people that are walking drunk, and they all look like old prospectors. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. This is better by the second. Think of those as like in Pac-Man, those little white... <laughs> Things mm-hmm. yeah. though the people walking around drunk, those are your little Pac Man right. dots. You're pellets. a good wooer. And can I say this too? I know this sounds almost trivial, but if I'm throwing away a sofa or something, mm-hmm. I don't want to call large item pickup. I just want to put it out on the curb and have it gone the next day. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't want to make a special phone call asking to pick up some big it, shit. It might not be gone, but it will be inhabited. Okay, good yes. enough. Good enough. <laughs> yep. Either either squirrels or raccoons or human beings. Human beings, probably. Most yeah. likely. Okay. Well, it's like an indoor outdoor living room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, the the beautiful thing about Venice is whatever you put out will become its own ecosystem. Refrigerator, uh-huh. people will come put shit in it uh-huh. and start right. to feed. So it's like it's like when they sink a boat and it becomes a reef. Part of a reef. Exactly. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Any celebrity action there at all? Uh, right now, we've got uh, in my neighborhood uh, Julia Roberts. Oh, was there? She just moved. Oh, Maria Bello across the street. Well, I like that. Mel Brooks around the corner. I'm gonna have sex with at least one of those people. No, Mel Brooks is not in town. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll have to wait. Um, Fiona Apple Ooh. around the corner. The lovely yeah. and talented Elizabeth Shue. It's Elizabeth oh, Shue, right? Okay. On, uh, all right. Well, set them up. Andrew's sister. Set them up. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. They all they all want to be there, and what's missing is the Republican in the mm-hmm. neighborhood. So for you, it's mm-hmm. a lock. You come in, mm-hmm. and you know you mm-hmm. get to point. I'm at, like the forbidden fruit right, for all the they, all the ladies. Oh, right. yeah. You saw that scene in Leaving Las Vegas where yeah. she's huddled in the shower with a trickle of blood going yeah. down the drain. Fiona Apple or Mel Brooks. Sorry. <laughs> 
anyway, you can't come in the neighborhood. I'm coming out. I'm, I've been wooed to Venice, everybody. Uh, did you finish the news? That's the news. I'm Allison Rosen. Zip it, cunts. That was the news. All right. I want to thank Dana Gould for coming out here. Dana can be found at Up Comedy Club in Chicago. That's January 25th and the 26th. The podcast, the Dana Gould Hour. You can get it on iTunes, website, danagould.com, Twitter, at Dana J. Gould. Fitzdog, everybody. Greg Fitzsimmons, Fitzdog Radio. You can get that on iTunes, website, gregfitzsimmons.com, Twitter, Greg Fitz Show, at Greg Fitz Show. Live shows coming up in Florida at uh, Off the Hook Comedy Club. And that's coming up the 24th through the 27th. But you can find out all the dates. Uh-oh, Addison Improv. Uh-oh, what does that Dallas. mean? Dallas. Oh. oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'll tell you, have you played the Addison Im- Improv? No, I heard only good things. Here's all I can say. <laughs> Here's all I can say. I had, I, I swear to God, I stopped the music for a second. I love that we <laughs> almost blipped past this. No, this there's one nothing. would have been promoting the show. <laughs> Addison is like, do not, when you picture Addison, Texas, don't picture like J.R. Ewing and Dallas and, okay. you know, that kind of thing. It's it's a little outside of Dallas in you know, Houston. It's where the Beverly like Hillbillies came from. That's right. It That's looks right. like a giant Westfield shopping plaza right. was dropped into some flat land. Right. And it's 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 there's nothing wrong with the improv at all, but it's I don't know if it was born in improv. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like once in a while you see the place that was clearly a Derweiner schnitzel, now yeah. it says tax preparation and you're yeah. like, well, was that why do you need that pointy rake on that roof to prepare taxes? But it's, it wasn't it didn't start life as an improv. It started life as something else, but it's now an improv, and it's fine, and the manager's fine, and everything's good. It is a little mattress super story. It's got a little of that. It, it sold something other than thoughts, jokes, and mirth originally, <laughs> and then it got to that. But let me tell you what happened to me. Um, I stayed, and I don't know where you're staying, but there's like a days in or something that's mm. walking distance. Days right? in. It's Jesus, like You Adam. can literally like just walk yeah. down and— I'll put it to you this way. I was drinking my wine out of a plastic cup that my hand was crushing as I was drinking. The bathroom, you know the plastic cups that come in the little sealable bag in there? Yes. The glass ones, evidently those can be contaminated. But the plastic ones, you have to tear open the baggie and get the plastic cup. And I was drinking my wine. And again, when the TV faces the same direction as the bed, that's not a good thing. Where It's off to the – but it's all fine. (laughs) It was all good. It was just I happened to be the day before Jimmy Kimmel did one of those celebrity auction things where he got the beachfront villa in Cancun. And he invited like it's literally like one of those things when you watch TMZ Uh, and you see Jennifer Aniston in Cancun and she has her own beach and infinity pool and the butler bringing the daiquiris. And there's, there's always shrimp being cooked somewhere. And there's a theater that night to watch a movie and everything. I literally had like two days of that, and then I go, I got a split Sunday morning. I need to be in Addison, Texas to play two nights at the Improv. And then next thing you know, I was watching Sports Center, drinking my wine out of a plastic cup and watching. Oh, wow. W- watching, uh, sitting in a red roof inn, and I was like, this is not Cancun. So any <laughs> anything would have been a letdown from Cancun. And, and Playboy the, Mansion would have problem, been a bummer. The problem was is Jimmy had the villa for like three more days, oh. and I did the, you know, it was like everyone was drunk, you know, on my ties going, where are you going? I'm like, heading to Addison. <laughs> <laughs> going to God's country. Going to God's country, yeah. Because when I'm there, I want to kill myself and see God. <laughs> so all I'm saying is don't go straight from Venice to Addison. <laughs> Go to, like, Baker, California and just spend 18 hours. Just sort of decompress a little bit. And then, you know what I mean? And certainly don't Glendale's go to— Glendale's not a bad starting place, Don't though. go to a villa in Cancun and then go straight to Addison. That's all I'm saying. So if you're out there, come out and see me. I'll be in uh, <laughs> Addison at the mattress slash— It is the state that gave the country Jack Ruby. That's right. All right. So until next time, Sam Carolla for Greg Fitzsimmons, Dana Gould, Allison Rosen, and Bald Brian saying— Mahala. Oh, you made a poo poo in the yeah, toilet. Terrific. Subscribe to youtube.com slash VPN for more Adam Carolla and other great shows like Comedy Bang Bang with Scott Ackerman 
and the big three. That's youtube.com slash VPN. For call in times and topics, follow the show on Twitter at Adam Carolla Show. Follow Ace on Twitter at Adam Carolla and check out the live podcast tonight from Amalfi in Los Angeles with guest Ben Schwartz. Adam's solo stand-up show at Detroit's Royal Oak Theater is this Friday night. An Adam and Dr. Drew reunion tour starts in February. Check adamcarolla.com to see if they're coming to your town.